It was a stormy Friday evening when Laura Johnson found herself alone in her parents' spacious century-old house. Her parents had left town for the weekend, attending a family reunion in another state, leaving Laura to enjoy a quiet weekend by herself. She had plans to binge watch her favorite shows, eat junk food, and perhaps invite a friend or two over. But the weather had other ideas. The rain began pouring in torrents as the evening settled in, accompanied by the occasional rumble of thunder. The wind howled outside, shaking the windows of the old house. Laura didn't mind the storm. In fact, she found it rather cozy. Wrapped in a blanket, she settled on the couch, flipping through channels before finally settling on a classic horror movie. As the movie played, she felt the comforting presence of her parents' old cat, Whiskers, who jumped onto her lap and curled up. Just as the protagonist in the movie screamed, a loud bang echoed through the house. Laura jumped, her heart racing but she quickly realized it was probably just a branch hitting the window. The old house had always made noises during storms, and she tried to dismiss it as just another quirk of the house. However, as she tried to settle back into the movie, a strange feeling crept over her, a sense of being watched. She paused the movie and looked around, but there was nothing unusual. Whiskers perked up, his ears twitching, but he remained on her lap. Laura shook her head, telling herself she was just being paranoid. The house was old, and old houses always had drafts and strange noises. Deciding to make some popcorn, she made her way to the kitchen. The floorboards creaked under her weight, the sound amplified in the silence. The storm seemed to intensify as she stood at the counter, listening to the popcorn popping in the microwave. The lights flickered, and for a brief moment, she was plunged into darkness before they blinked back on. When the microwave beeped, she grabbed the bowl of popcorn and returned to the living room. As she walked back, she thought she heard a faint whispering, but it was so soft she couldn't make out the words. She stopped, holding her breath, straining her ears to hear. But there was only the sound of the rain and the occasional clap of thunder. Back in the living room, she tried to shake off the eerie feeling that was growing stronger. She resumed her movie, hoping to distract herself. But as the minutes ticked by, the sense of unease grew. Whiskers suddenly jumped off her lap, his fur standing on end, and darted out of the room. Whiskers? Laura called, but the cat didn't return. A chill ran down her spine as she realized she had never seen the cat act like that before. Deciding to look for him, she paused the movie again and ventured into the hallway. The house seemed unusually dark and quiet, the only sound the rain pattering against the windows. She checked the kitchen, the dining room, and the study, but there was no sign of Whiskers. Whiskers, come here, boy, she called softly, trying to keep her voice steady. She headed upstairs, thinking the cat might have gone to her parents' room, where he often liked to sleep. As she climbed the stairs, she heard the whispering again. This time, it was clearer, a soft, unintelligible murmur coming from one of the rooms. She froze, her heart pounding. Hello? She called out her voice barely above a whisper. There was no response, but the whispering continued. She took a deep breath and pushed open the door to her parents' bedroom. The room was empty, but she could still hear the whispering, now louder and more distinct. It was coming from the closet. Laura's hand trembled as she reached for the closet door. She hesitated, her mind racing with possibilities. Was it the storm playing tricks on her ears, or was someone actually in the house? She swallowed hard and yanked the door open, bracing herself for what she might find. The closet was empty, save for her parents' clothes hanging neatly inside. She let out a breath she didn't realize she'd been holding, but the relief was short-lived. As she turned to leave the room, she noticed something strange. A small, old-fashioned key on the floor, one she had never seen before. It was ornate, with a delicate pattern etched into the metal. As she bent down to pick it up, the whispering stopped abruptly, leaving the house in complete silence. She felt a cold draft brush past her, causing the hair on the back of her neck to stand up. She turned around quickly, her eyes scanning the room, but there was no one there. Clutching the key tightly in her hand, she backed out of the room and shut the door behind her. She didn't know what was going on, but she couldn't shake the feeling that she wasn't alone in the house. As she stood in the hallway, trying to make sense of everything, she heard a faint scratching sound coming from the attic above her. Her blood ran cold. 
She knew the attic was always locked. Her parents kept it that way because it was filled with old, fragile items and family heirlooms. But now, as she stood there in the darkness, she realized that the key she had found might be the key to the attic. Her mind was racing with fear and curiosity. Did she dare go up there? What if someone was hiding in the house? She could call the police, but what would she tell them? That she found a key and heard strange noises? She felt foolish even thinking about it. Taking a deep breath, she made a decision. She had to know. She had to see what was in the attic. As she slowly made her way to the attic door, the house seemed to grow colder, the shadows deeper. Her hand shook as she inserted the key into the lock. It fit perfectly. She turned the key, hearing the click of the lock releasing. With a trembling hand, she reached for the doorknob, hesitating for a moment before pushing the door open. The hinges creaked loudly, echoing through the silent house. She stood at the bottom of the narrow staircase leading up into the darkness of the attic, her heart pounding in her chest. Taking another deep breath, she began to climb, each step feeling heavier than the last. As she reached the top of the stairs, she fumbled for the light switch. When she finally found it and flipped it on, a dim, flickering bulb illuminated the dusty, cobweb-filled space. And there, in the far corner of the attic, she saw something that made her blood run cold. A large, old trunk she had never seen before, slightly ajar, with a dark stain seeping out from underneath it. Her breath caught in her throat as she realized that whatever was in that trunk, it was the source of the whispering. Laura stood frozen at the top of the stairs, her eyes locked on the mysterious trunk in the far corner of the attic. Her breath came in shallow gasps, and her heart raced as she tried to comprehend what she was seeing. The dark stain spreading from beneath the trunk seemed to pulse in the dim light, almost as if it were alive. The whispering, though faint, began to fill her ears again, swirling around her like a chilling breeze. She swallowed hard, her mouth dry, and took a tentative step forward. Each step seemed to amplify the whispers, making them clearer, but still unintelligible. They seemed to come from all around her, echoing off the walls of the attic, surrounding her in a cocoon of sound. Her eyes flicked around the attic, but there was no sign of anyone else. Laura stopped, her breath visible in the suddenly cold air. Hello? She called out, her voice trembling. There was no response, only the whispering, growing louder and more insistent. It was as if a chorus of voices was urging her to come closer to the trunk. Compelled by a mixture of fear and curiosity, she continued her slow approach. Her hand shook as she reached out to touch the lid of the trunk. As her fingers brushed against the cold, dusty wood, the whispering stopped abruptly, plunging the attic into an eerie silence. She hesitated, her hand hovering over the trunk, her mind screaming at her to turn around and leave. But something deep inside her needed to know what was inside. She took a deep breath and with a swift motion, flung the lid open. Dust flew into the air, and Laura coughed, waving her hand in front of her face to clear the particles from her lungs. As the dust settled, she looked down into the trunk and gasped. Inside were old, decaying clothes that looked like they belonged to a different century. The fabric was worn and faded, covered in patches of mold. Beneath the clothes, she saw a collection of small objects, a rusty, ornate pocket watch, a cracked mirror, and several yellowed, folded letters tied together with a ribbon. But what caught her attention the most was a small, leather-bound book with a tarnished clasp holding it shut. Laura hesitated before reaching for the book, her hand trembling. As her fingers closed around it, she felt a sudden chill run through her body, as if an icy hand had grasped her heart. She pulled the book out of the trunk and held it in front of her, examining the cover. There was no title, just a strange, intricate symbol embossed into the leather. She undid the clasp and opened the book to the first page. The writing was faded and hard to read, but it appeared to be some sort of journal. The first entry was dated over a hundred years ago in a neat, flowing script. As she read the first few lines, her blood ran cold. March 13th, 1882. The voices started again last night. I fear they are coming for me. I have locked myself in the attic, but I know it is only a matter of time before they find me. Laura's hands began to shake uncontrollably as she turned the pages, scanning the entries. They were all similar, 
each one more desperate than the last, describing whispers and shadows, strange figures seen in the dark, and a sense of being hunted. April 2nd, 1882. I cannot escape them. The whispers grow louder each night. They know my name. They call to me, urging me to join them. I fear I am losing my mind. She turned to the last entry, dated just a few days later. April 5th, 1882. I have decided to end it. I cannot live like this, in constant fear. If anyone finds this journal, know that the voices are real. They are always watching. They will never stop. Laura felt a sudden wave of dizziness wash over her, and she dropped the book back into the trunk. She stumbled backward, her foot catching on something, sending her sprawling to the floor. As she hit the ground, her head struck the edge of an old wooden crate, and everything went black. When she came to, she was lying on the cold attic floor. Her head throbbed, and she could feel a warm trickle of blood running down her temple. She groaned and tried to sit up, her vision blurry. As she blinked to clear her eyes, she noticed something that made her heart skip a beat. The trunk was closed again, and the dark stain had spread further across the att attic floor, as if it were reaching out to her. She scrambled to her feet, her head spinning, and backed away from the trunk. Her mind was racing, trying to make sense of what had happened. She was sure she had left the trunk open. How had it closed? And what was that stain? Just then, she heard a soft creaking sound behind her. She spun around, her heart pounding in her chest. The attic door was slowly swinging shut on its own. She rushed forward, reaching for the door, but it slammed shut with a force that sent a gust of wind through the attic, blowing out the dim light bulb overhead. Laura was plunged into darkness. She fumbled for the door handle, her fingers slipping on the cold metal. Panic set in as she realized the door wouldn't budge. It was as if something was holding it shut from the other side. Her breathing grew rapid and shallow, and she could feel her pulse pounding in her temples. She pounded on the door with her fists. Help! Somebody, please! She screamed, her voice echoing through the dark, empty house but her cries were swallowed by the thick, oppressive silence that filled the attic. Then she heard it again, the whispering. This time it was clearer, closer, as if the voices were right next to her. She pressed her back against the door, her eyes wide in the darkness, searching for the source of the sound. The whispers were all around her, circling her, growing louder and more insistent. She squeezed her eyes shut, trying to block out the sound, but it was no use. The voices seemed to be inside her head, whispering her name over and over. Laura, Laura, come to us, join us. She shook her head violently, her hands covering her ears, but the whispers only grew louder. Tears streamed down her face as she screamed, leave me alone. Suddenly, the whispering stopped. The silence was so abrupt, so complete, that it was almost deafening. Laura opened her eyes, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She listened intently, waiting for the whispers to return, but there was nothing. Then, from the darkness, came a soft, slow scratching sound. It was coming from inside the attic, from the far corner where the trunk was. Her heart pounded as she realized it was the same scratching sound she had heard earlier, the one that had led her to the attic in the first place. Summoning every ounce of courage she had, Laura moved slowly toward the corner, her hands trembling. She reached into her pocket and pulled out her phone, using the flashlight to cut through the darkness. The beam of light shook as she held it up, illuminating the trunk. The lid was moving, slowly lifting as if something inside was trying to get out. Laura's breath caught in her throat and she felt a scream rising up inside her, but she bit it back, too terrified to make a sound. As the lid of the trunk creaked open, she took a step back, her foot bumping into something behind her. She turned the flashlight around and saw the old wooden crate she had tripped over earlier. The scratching grew louder, more frantic, coming from inside the trunk now. And Laura's fear turned to horror. She had to get out. She had to get out now. She turned back to the door, grabbed the handle, and yanked with all her might. This time, the door flew open and she stumbled out of the attic, nearly falling down the stairs. She slammed the door shut behind her and fumbled with the key, locking it. She backed away from the door, her eyes never leaving it, as if expecting it to burst open at any moment. But the door remained shut, the whispering and scratching now muffled, but still audible behind it. She backed down the hallway, her heart racing, and turned to run down the stairs. 
As she reached the bottom, she heard a loud crash from the attic above, followed by silence. She stopped, her breath catching in her throat, and looked up at the attic door. It was still shut, but she could feel something, some presence on the other side, watching her, waiting. She turned and ran to her room, slamming the door shut behind her. She locked it and backed away, her hands shaking. She grabbed her phone and dialed 911, her fingers trembling so badly she almost dropped it. As she waited for the call to connect, she heard a soft, scratching sound coming from her closet. Her eyes widened in terror as she realized it was the same scratching she had heard in the attic. And then, in a voice that was not her own, but one that was achingly familiar, she heard a whisper from the darkness of her closet, saying, Laura, you can't escape. We're already here. Laura's heart hammered in her chest as she stared at the closet door. The whisper had sounded just like her mother's voice, soft yet firm, the way her mother called her name when she wanted to get her attention. But Laura knew that was impossible. Her parents were hundreds of miles away. The line on her phone connected, and she stammered into the receiver. Hello, I need help. Someone is in my house. 911. What's your emergency? The operator asked in a calm, practiced voice. Laura tried to steady her breathing. I'm home alone, and I think someone, someone is in my attic. And now, now they're in my closet. I hear noises, whispers. Okay, ma'am, stay calm, the operator said. Can you confirm your address for me? Laura quickly recited her address, her eyes still glued to the closet door. She could hear the faint scratching, like nails on wood coming from inside. Her mind raced with possibilities. Had someone broken in? Was she losing her mind? Could it be a hallucination brought on by the stress of the storm and being alone? Stay on the line with me, ma'am. Officers are on their way, the operator assured her. Please hurry, Laura whispered, her voice barely audible. Her hand was clammy against the phone as she backed away from the closet, her eyes never leaving it. Suddenly, the scratching stopped, replaced by a soft thud, as if something had fallen over inside. She jumped at the sound, her breath catching in her throat. She thought about calling out, but fear choked her voice. She didn't want to know what would respond. Minutes dragged by like hours. Laura was hyper-aware of every creak and groan of the house as the storm continued to rage outside. The wind battered the windows, and rain lashed against the glass, but she hardly noticed it over the pounding of her own heart. Then, just as the silence in her room became unbearable, she heard a soft voice from the closet again. This time, it was even clearer, unmistakably her mother's voice. Laura, sweetheart, it's so cold in here. Please let me out. Laura's breath hitched. Her mother? It couldn't be. She knew it couldn't be. Yet the voice was so familiar, so comforting in its tone, that for a fleeting second, she almost believed it. But the rational part of her mind screamed that this was impossible. Her mother was away with her father, nowhere near this house. The doorbell rang suddenly, startling Laura so much that she nearly dropped the phone. She turned her gaze away from the closet for the first time in what felt like hours and rushed to the window. She saw the familiar blue and red lights of a police car flashing in the rain-soaked driveway. Relief flooded through her as she ran downstairs, her feet barely touching the steps in her haste. Flinging open the front door, Laura was greeted by two police officers, a man and a woman, both wearing rain-soaked uniforms. Their faces were stern but calm, trained to handle situations like this. Are you Laura Johnson? The female officer asked, her voice steady. Yes, yes, that's me. Laura replied, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and relief. Please, you have to help me. There's someone in my house. I heard them, upstairs, in the attic, and now in my closet. Okay, we're here to help, the male officer said, his hand resting reassuringly on his holstered gun. Why don't you stay down here while we check things out? Laura nodded, hugging herself, as the officers stepped into the house, water dripping from their jackets onto the hardwood floor. She felt a pang of guilt for not warning them about the attic, about whatever was in that trunk. But she couldn't bring herself to speak of it. It seemed too surreal, too absurd. The officers moved quickly and efficiently, the male officer heading up the stairs while the female officer stayed with Laura. Can you tell me exactly what happened? She asked gently. Laura took a shaky breath and recounted the events of the evening. The whispering, the attic, the journal, the trunk, and the voice in her closet. As she spoke, 
She realized how crazy it all sounded, and she could see a flicker of doubt cross the officer's face. Okay, stay here. The officer said after Laura finished her story. My partner is just checking upstairs. If there's anyone here, we'll find them. Laura nodded, wrapping her arms around herself, her skin prickling with a cold that seemed to come from within rather than from the storm outside. Minutes passed, and then the male officer's voice echoed from upstairs. Clear up here, but you should see this. Laura's heart sank. The female officer gave her a reassuring nod and went upstairs. Laura stayed rooted to the spot in the foyer, listening intently to the low murmurs of the officer's conversation. She could only make out fragments, something about old stuff and attic locked. Then, the female officer returned, her face a bit paler than before. We found an old trunk in the attic, she said slowly, as if choosing her words carefully. It's locked now, but there's a strange smell up there, like something old and decaying. We didn't find anyone, though. Laura felt a cold chill run down her spine. But, but the whispers, the voice in the closet? The male officer appeared at the top of the stairs. We checked every room, he said. No one's here, but uh, that attic definitely has some strange vibes. I'm not sure how else to put it. Laura's hands shook as she rubbed her arms, trying to warm herself against the cold that still clung to her. She didn't know what to say. How could she explain what she'd experienced? The officers looked at her with a mixture of concern and skepticism. Look, the female officer said gently, it's possible that being alone in this big old house during a storm could make anyone feel uneasy. Maybe your mind played some tricks on you. It happens more often than you'd think. Laura wanted to protest, to insist that she knew what she had heard and seen, but doubt began to creep into her mind. Had she imagined it all? Had the isolation and the storm caused her to hear things that weren't there? We're going to check around outside, the male officer said, just to be sure. Stay inside, lock the doors, and if you hear or see anything else, call us right away. Laura nodded numbly as they left, closing the door behind them. She locked it, the solid click echoing in the silence of the house. She stood there for a moment, staring at the door, before slowly turning and walking back to the living room. She sat on the couch, pulling the blanket tightly around her shoulders, and tried to make sense of everything. The house was quiet now, eerily so. She could hear the clock ticking on the wall, the sound almost deafening in the silence. Suddenly, she felt a soft brush against her leg. She jumped, stifling a scream, and looked down to see Whiskers, her parents' old cat, rubbing against her leg, his purrs vibrating through the quiet room. Whiskers? she whispered, relief flooding through her. She picked him up and held him close, burying her face in his fur. Where have you been, buddy? But then she froze. Whiskers' fur was damp and cold, as if he had been outside in the rain. She pulled back, looking at the cat in confusion. How had he gotten out? The doors had been locked, and she hadn't let him out. And then she heard it again, a soft, barely-there whisper, right in her ear. Laura, we're still here. Her blood ran cold. She looked around frantically, but the room was empty. The whispering was closer now, not from the attic or the closet, but from right beside her. Whiskers hissed, his fur standing on end and leapt from her arms, darting out of the room. Laura's heart pounded as she realized that whatever was in the house, it wasn't gone. It was still with her, closer than ever. And then, just as she was about to run after Whiskers, the lights in the house flickered and went out, plunging her into complete darkness. Darkness swallowed Laura whole. The house, already strange and disquieting, now felt like a black void that pressed in from all sides. Panic surged through her veins as she fumbled in her pocket for her phone, her hands shaking uncontrollably. When she finally managed to pull it out, the screen's pale light barely pushed back the shadows. Please, please, she whispered, her voice breaking as she quickly turned on the flashlight app. The beam cut through the dark, casting long, dancing shadows across the room. Her breath was loud in her ears, her pulse throbbing in her throat. Laura stood up slowly, keeping her phone's light trained ahead of her. Her parents' house, once a place of comfort and familiarity, now seemed alien and sinister, every piece of furniture an unfamiliar shape in the wavering light. Whiskers had disappeared into the shadows, leaving Laura alone. Whiskers, she called but her voice was swallowed by the dark, the name echoing back to her from unseen corners. 
She strained to hear anything over her own breathing, the cat's soft footsteps, the officer's voices outside, anything. But there was only silence. And then, just on the edge of hearing, the whisper returned. Laura, come to us. Come join us in the dark. She whirled around, the light darting across the walls as if it, too, were afraid of what it might reveal. Her mind raced. What was happening to her? What was in this house? The journal's words came back to her in a rush. The whispers are real. They are always watching. They will never stop. No, she muttered under her breath. This can't be happening. She forced herself to move, taking one careful step after another toward the staircase. The attic, the place where this had all begun, was looming in her thoughts. She needed to see it again, to understand. As she ascended the stairs, every creak under her feet sounded like a gunshot in the oppressive silence. Her flashlight flickered slightly, and she bit back a cry, gripping the phone tighter as she reached the top. The door to the attic was just ahead, closed and foreboding. She swallowed hard and reached for the knob. It was cold, like ice. She hesitated, the memory of the voices and the dark stain filling her mind, but she had to know, she had to see. With a deep breath, she turned the knob and pushed the door open. The attic was even darker than the rest of the house, the single bulb overhead dead. She raised her phone, casting the light across the room. The trunk was still in the corner, closed again, as if it had never been opened. But the dark stain had spread further, now reaching almost to the middle of the floor. It looked like a puddle of ink, impossibly dark and reflective. Hello? She whispered, her voice trembling. There was no response, just the faint sound of her own breathing and the creak of the house settling in the storm. She took a step inside, her shoes sticking slightly to the floor as if something tacky had been spilled. Then a soft sound, like a sigh, came from behind her. Laura spun around, the light sweeping across the attic, but there was nothing there. Just shadows, deep and impenetrable, that seemed to shift and move in the corner of her vision. She took another step forward, closer to the trunk. Her heart pounded in her chest, and her mouth was dry with fear. She needed to open it again, to see if the journal was still there, to see if any of this was real. Her hands shook as she reached for the lid. The whisper started again, louder this time, more insistent. Laura, Laura, let us out, join us. She ignored them, gritting her teeth as she lifted the lid. The hinges creaked, and a waft of cold air hit her face, making her shiver. Inside, the trunk was just as she had left it. Old clothes, the rusty pocket watch, the cracked mirror, and the small leather-bound journal. But there was something else, something that hadn't been there before. At the bottom of the trunk, half covered by the moldy clothes, was a small wooden box. It was unremarkable at first glance, but Laura's eyes were drawn to it. She reached down and picked it up, her fingers brushing against the cold, smooth wood. The whispers grew louder, frantic. No, Laura, don't leave it alone. Ignoring the voices, she lifted the box out of the trunk and set it on the floor in front of her. There was no lock, just a simple latch. She hesitated, her breath coming in shallow gasps before flipping the latch open and lifting the lid. Inside was a single object, a small ornate key. It looked ancient, made of tarnished silver with intricate engravings along its length. It seemed almost to hum with a low, resonant energy as she held it up to the light. The whispers suddenly stopped. The attic fell deathly silent, as if the house itself were holding its breath. Laura stared at the key, her mind racing. What was this? What did it open? Before she could think any further, a loud crash echoed through the house, followed by a series of heavy footsteps. She jumped, dropping the key back into the box, her heart leaping into her throat. The footsteps were coming up the stairs, fast and heavy, like someone running. She backed away from the trunk, her eyes wide with fear. The footsteps reached the top of the stairs and stopped abruptly. Laura held her breath, her eyes fixed on the open door of the attic. The light from her phone shook as her hands trembled. Then a figure appeared in the doorway, silhouetted against the dark hallway beyond. It was tall and thin, with long, tangled hair hanging over its face. Its clothes were old and ragged, and its skin was pale and almost translucent. It stood there for a moment, swaying slightly before stepping into the attic. Laura wanted to scream, to run, but her body was frozen in place. The figure moved closer, its footsteps slow and deliberate. As it came into the light, she saw its face, 
and a wave of horror washed over her. It was her. The figure had her face, pale and gaunt, with sunken eyes and a hollow expression. It reached out a hand toward her, and Laura could see that its fingers were thin and bony, the skin stretched tight over the knuckles. Laura, it whispered, its voice a twisted, distorted version of her own. You shouldn't have come back here. Laura stumbled backward, her back hitting the wall behind her. What? What are you? She gasped, her voice barely a whisper. The figure smiled, a cold, chilling smile that didn't reach its eyes. I am you, Laura, or at least I was, before the voices, before the dark. Laura shook her head, tears streaming down her face. No, no, this isn't real. You're not real. The figure took another step closer, its smile widening. Oh, but I am, and so are they. It gestured to the shadows around the room, and Laura felt a cold, creeping dread settle over her as she realized that the shadows were moving, shifting, forming shapes. Figures began to emerge from the darkness, their forms vague and indistinct, like smoke in the wind. They had no faces, just dark voids where their features should have been. But she could feel their eyes on her, watching her with a cold, hungry intensity. Join us, Laura, the figure whispered, its voice merging with the chorus of whispers that filled the attic. Join us in the dark. It's not so bad here. Laura felt a pull, a deep, instinctual urge to step forward, to let the darkness take her. But something inside her resisted, a small, stubborn spark of defiance that refused to be extinguished. No, she said, her voice stronger now. I won't. I won't join you. The figure's smile faded, replaced by a look of cold fury. Then you will never leave, it hissed, and the shadows surged forward, closing in around her. Laura turned and ran, her feet slipping on the slick floor as she sprinted toward the door. She could feel the shadows at her back, reaching out to grab her, to pull her into the darkness. She reached the door and slammed it shut behind her, throwing her weight against it. The whispers rose to a deafening crescendo, but she held the door shut, her heart pounding in her chest. After a few moments, the pressure against the door eased, and the whispers began to fade, replaced by the sound of the storm outside. Breathing heavily, Laura stepped back from the door, her hands shaking. She could still feel the cold of the shadows on her skin, the echo of the whispers in her mind. She looked down at her hands, half expecting them to be pale and bony like the figures, but they were still her own. She was still herself, for now. But she knew that whatever was in this house, it wasn't done with her yet, and she wasn't sure how much longer she could resist its pull. As she stood there, staring at the attic door, she realized that the key she had found might be her only hope. Whatever it opened, it had to be important. She just hoped it wasn't too late to find out. Laura's hands were still trembling as she stared at the attic door. The storm outside continued its relentless assault on the house, the wind howling and the rain pelting against the windows. She knew she couldn't stay here much longer. The darkness seemed to press in on her, suffocating her. The key in the wooden box, though unsettling, seemed to be her only lead. With a deep breath, she turned her attention back to the trunk. She needed to know more, and whatever this key unlocked might hold the answers. She hesitated only a moment before walking back over to the trunk, her flashlight cutting through the gloom. The shadows around her seemed to shift and writhe with every step she took, as if they were alive and watching her. She opened the trunk and retrieved the small, ornate key. It was heavier than she expected, its surface cold and metallic. She inspected it closely, noting the intricate engravings that coiled around it like tendrils. Laura turned her attention to the attic again. The storm outside had drowned out almost all other noises. As she approached the attic door, the whispers resumed, fainter but persistent. They were almost soothing now, a sinister lullaby that seemed to coax her to open the door. The key felt like a dead weight in her hand, but she took another deep breath and inserted it into the keyhole of the attic door. It turned with surprising ease, and she heard the faint click of the lock disengaging. Her heart pounded louder as she pushed the door open, revealing the dark, empty attic once more. As she stepped inside, her flashlight illuminated the room, casting stark shadows against the walls. The attic seemed to have returned to its previous state, quiet, undisturbed. The trunk was still there, its lid closed. The dark stain on the floor had not grown any further, but it still looked ominous. 
Laura glanced around the attic, noting the old, forgotten furniture and the cobwebs that had accumulated over the years. The wooden crate she had tripped over earlier now looked even more unassuming, but she couldn't shake the feeling that it was somehow significant. She turned her attention back to the trunk. She wasn't sure what she expected to find, but she knew she had to open it again. As she lifted the lid, she felt a chill run down her spine, as if the air around her had turned icy. The trunk's contents were the same as before. Old clothes, the pocket watch, the cracked mirror, and the leather-bound journal. Laura took the journal out and opened it to the last entry she had read earlier. Her eyes scanned the faded script again, but this time she noticed something she had missed before. A small handwritten note at the bottom of the last page tucked beneath the ribbon that held the letters together. She carefully unfolded the note, her fingers shaking. The writing was hasty and nearly illegible, but she could make out a few key phrases. The key, the door, must not open. It is not what it seems. Laura's heart raced as she read the note. The key was meant for a door, but it warned her not to open it. Her hands trembled as she put the note back in the journal, a sense of dread settling over her. A loud crash from downstairs jolted her out of her thoughts. Laura spun around, her flashlight beam swinging wildly as she tried to pinpoint the source of the noise. Her heart pounded as she realized the sound had come from the first floor, perhaps from the foyer. She needed to check, but her fear of the attic and its secrets made it hard to leave. With a final, reluctant glance at the trunk and its eerie contents, Laura turned and hurried down the stairs. Her mind was a whirlwind of thoughts. What if someone had broken in? What if the whispers had been more than just echoes of her fear? As she reached the bottom of the stairs, she saw the front door ajar, the rain pouring into the foyer. The door hadn't been opened by her. It was as if it had been forced open. She approached cautiously, her flashlight casting a narrow beam of light across the room. The foyer was a mess. Furniture had been overturned, and the rug was bunched up as if someone had dragged it across the floor. Laura's gaze fell upon a large, ornate mirror that stood against the wall. The glass was cracked, but it wasn't the damage that caught her eye. It was the shape of the cracks. They formed an intricate pattern, almost like runes or symbols, and in the center of the mirror, as if etched into the glass, was a familiar symbol, the same one embossed on the cover of the journal. Laura approached the mirror, her pulse quickening. She reached out to touch the cracked glass, but something made her hesitate. She knew that whatever was happening was far beyond her understanding, and the mirror seemed to hold a crucial piece of the puzzle. Her phone buzzed in her pocket, startling her. It was a text from her mother. We're on our way. Got your message. Stay safe. We'll be there soon. Relief mixed with a new wave of fear. Her parents would be here soon, but what if they arrived too late? What if whatever was haunting the house found them as well? Laura took a deep breath and tried to steady her nerves. She needed to figure out what the mirror meant, what the key was for, and how it all connected. She glanced at the cracked mirror once more, then turned her attention back to the stairs. She needed to find out more about the key, about the door it was meant to unlock. As she started to climb the stairs, a chill filled the air, and she felt a presence behind her, watching her every move. She glanced back, but there was no one there. The house seemed to be holding its breath, the silence pressing in on her. When she reached the attic, she found the key in the box still where she had left it. She picked it up, the cold metal sending a shiver down her spine. Her thoughts raced as she looked at the dark stain on the attic floor. There was something ominous about the stain, and she felt that it was connected to whatever was happening. Laura turned her attention back to the attic door. The whispers had stopped, but the house felt heavier, more oppressive. She knew she had to confront whatever lay beyond that door. With a deep breath, she unlocked the attic door once more and pushed it open. The attic was still dark and silent, the only sound the steady drip of water from the storm outside. She took a few hesitant steps inside, her flashlight beam cutting through the gloom. She approached the trunk again, her mind racing with questions. As she reached for the trunk's lid, she heard a faint rustling sound behind her. She spun around, her flashlight sweeping across the attic, but there was nothing there. The rustling continued, coming from the far corner of the room. 
Laura hesitated, then slowly approached the corner. The rustling grew louder, more frantic, and she could see a small, dark shape moving in the shadows. Her flashlight beam caught the shape, and she gasped in horror. It was Whiskers, her cat, looking disheveled and scared. He had been hiding in the corner, his fur matted with rainwater. Laura reached out to him, her heart aching with relief and worry. Whiskers, she whispered, picking him up and cradling him against her chest. I'm so glad you're okay. But as she held him, she noticed something strange. His eyes were wide and filled with terror, as if he had seen something that had frightened him deeply. His fur bristled, and he hissed at something behind her. Laura turned slowly, her flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. She saw nothing but the shadows, but she could feel a cold, oppressive presence closing in around her. The whispers began again, this time coming from all directions, a cacophony of voices that seemed to drown out everything else. The whispers grew louder, more urgent, until they filled the attic, echoing off the walls. Laura's fear surged as she realized that whatever was haunting the house was closing in on her, and she had no idea how to escape. The key in her hand seemed to pulse with an unnatural energy, and she knew that it was her only hope. She had to find the door it unlocked, and she had to do it quickly before the shadows consumed her. As she turned back to the trunk, she saw the dark stain on the floor spreading, creeping closer to where she stood. The shadows seemed to writhe and twist, forming shapes that moved with a malevolent purpose. Laura's heart raced as she grabbed the key and made her way toward the attic door. She had to find the door it unlocked and confront whatever lay beyond. Her parents were on their way, but she couldn't rely on them to save her. She had to save herself. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, and Laura felt a cold, invisible hand reach out to her. She took a deep breath and stepped through the attic door, determined to face whatever awaited her. Laura's mind raced as she moved quickly down the stairs, whiskers clutched tightly in her arms. The storm outside seemed to intensify, the wind howling like a living thing, but the sound that troubled her most was the eerie, echoing whispers that followed her every step. They were relentless and seemed to come from all directions, drowning out her thoughts and adding to her fear. Reaching the second floor, Laura paused to catch her breath. She glanced around, her flashlight beam flickering erratically. The house's once familiar layout now seemed foreign, every shadow a potential threat. The whispers grew louder as she approached the top of the stairs, and she felt an overwhelming sense of urgency to find the door that the key would unlock. She moved cautiously down the hallway, her eyes scanning the walls for any sign of a hidden door. The whispers, now almost a constant drone, seemed to pulse with an otherworldly rhythm, and Laura felt a growing sense of dread. It was as if the house itself was alive, aware of her every move. She passed by the rooms she had previously explored, her parents' bedroom, the guest room, and the old study. Each room looked as it always had, but now they seemed to hold secrets, hiding something just out of sight. Laura's flashlight beam landed on an old dusty bookcase in the hallway. She had noticed it before, but it hadn't stood out to her. Something about it seemed different now. Laura moved toward the bookcase, feeling a growing sense of familiarity. Her flashlight revealed rows of old books, their spines cracked and faded. She ran her fingers along the edges, brushing off layers of dust. She noticed that one section of the bookcase was slightly different from the rest. The shelves were not evenly spaced, and there was a small gap where the books seemed to be irregularly stacked. Her heart raced as she touched the gap, feeling a slight breeze coming from behind the bookcase. With a deep breath, Laura pushed against the side of the bookcase. To her surprise, it moved with a soft creak, revealing a narrow passage behind it. Laura hesitated for a moment, her pulse quickening. The whispers grew louder, more urgent, as if the house was trying to warn her away. But she couldn't turn back now. She had to know what was in the passage, what the key would unlock. She carefully moved the bookcase aside and stepped into the narrow, dimly lit passage. The walls were rough and unpainted, and the air was musty and stale. She could barely see in the darkness, but her flashlight revealed the passage stretching ahead into the gloom. The whispers seemed to be coming from deeper within, mingling with the sound of dripping water. As Laura moved forward, she felt a growing sense of claustrophobia. The passage was narrow and winding, 
with sharp turns and uneven footing. She had to navigate carefully, her flashlight casting eerie shadows on the walls. The whispers continued, a maddening chorus that seemed to press in on her from all sides. After what felt like an eternity of walking, the passage opened into a small, hidden room. The space was cramped and cluttered with old furniture, broken mirrors, and dusty relics. In the center of the room stood a large, ornate door, its surface covered in intricate carvings. It was old and weathered, but the carvings were still visible, depicting scenes of people being consumed by darkness. Laura's breath caught in her throat as she approached the door. It was the door that the key had to unlock, the one that had been hidden behind the bookcase. She held the key tightly in her hand, her heart pounding with a mixture of fear and anticipation. The whispers had grown louder, a deafening cacophony that filled the small room. Laura could barely hear herself think as she reached for the keyhole. She hesitated for a moment, glancing around the room, but there was no turning back now. With a deep breath, Laura inserted the key into the lock and turned it. The key turned with a satisfying click and the door creaked open slowly. Laura's flashlight beam revealed a dark, empty space beyond the door. It was as if the room beyond was a void, an abyss that swallowed the light. Laura took a tentative step inside, her flashlight illuminating the room. It was a large, circular chamber with a high ceiling, the walls lined with shelves of old books and artifacts. In the center of the room stood a pedestal with a single object resting on it, a small, ancient book. As Laura approached the pedestal, she felt a chill run down her spine. The book was bound in cracked, worn leather, its cover embossed with the same symbol that had been etched into the cracked mirror. She reached out to touch the book, her fingers trembling. Before she could open it, she heard a noise behind her. She spun around, her flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. The whispers had stopped abruptly, replaced by a heavy silence. Laura's heart raced as she scanned the room, but there was no one there. The silence was oppressive, almost deafening. Laura took a deep breath and turned her attention back to the book. She had come this far, and she needed to know what it contained. With a shaking hand, Laura opened the book. The pages were filled with strange symbols and writings that she couldn't understand. The text seemed to shift and change as she looked at it, as if the book itself was alive. Her flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows across the pages. As Laura read, she began to feel a sense of unease. The book spoke of rituals and incantations, of dark forces that could be summoned or banished. It mentioned the importance of the key and the door, and how they were connected to the power of the darkness that lay beyond. Laura's eyes widened as she read about the consequences of tampering with the forces described in the book. The words spoke of terrible consequences for those who dared to open the door and unleash the darkness within. A loud crash from behind startled her, and she spun around, her flashlight beam catching sight of a shadow moving in the corner of the room. The shadow was tall and dark, with an indistinct shape that seemed to shift and writhe. Laura felt a surge of terror as the shadow moved closer, its form becoming more defined. It was the same figure she had seen earlier in the attic, pale, gaunt, and with hollow eyes. It reached out toward her, its bony fingers stretching with a malevolent intent. Laura backed away, clutching the book tightly. The figure's gaze seemed to bore into her, its eyes filled with a cold, unfeeling darkness. The whispers began again, a chorus of voices that filled the room with a chilling harmony. Laura knew she had to act quickly. She glanced at the book, trying to find any clue that might help her. The pages seemed to flicker and change, but one passage stood out, an incantation that promised to seal away the darkness and banish the evil forces. With a trembling voice, Laura began to recite the incantation. Her words were shaky and uncertain, but she focused on the task at hand. As she spoke, the figure in the shadows seemed to recoil, its form twisting and distorting. The whispers grew louder, almost deafening, as if the room itself were fighting against her. Laura's voice faltered, but she forced herself to continue, her heart pounding with fear and determination. The figure let out a chilling scream, its form dissolving into the darkness. The shadows around the room seemed to writhe and twist, and the air grew colder. Laura continued to recite the incantation, her voice growing stronger as she fought against the darkness. Finally, with a last, desperate cry, 
Laura finished the incantation. The room was filled with a blinding light, and the darkness seemed to recede. The figure vanished completely, and the whispers faded into silence. Laura collapsed to the floor, exhausted and trembling. The book fell from her hands, its pages now blank and empty. The room was quiet, the oppressive atmosphere gone. The storm outside had subsided, leaving only the soft sound of rain against the windows. As Laura caught her breath, she felt a sense of relief and triumph. She had faced the darkness and survived. But she knew that the house still held secrets, and the forces that had haunted her were not entirely vanquished. She stood up slowly, feeling the weight of the key in her hand. The darkness had been driven back, but Laura knew that the true nature of the house and its history was far from over. There were still questions to be answered and mysteries to be unraveled. With a final glance at the chamber, Laura made her way back to the hidden passage. She was determined to uncover the truth, to find out what had brought the darkness into her home and how she could ensure that it would never return. Laura emerged from the hidden passage, her mind reeling from the events she had just witnessed. The house was eerily quiet now, the oppressive whispers gone and replaced by a strange, unsettling calm. The storm outside had finally quieted, leaving only the gentle patter of rain against the windows. As she climbed the stairs back to the second floor, she felt a strange mixture of relief and unease. She had managed to confront the darkness and recite the incantation, but the true nature of the house and its secrets still eluded her. The blank pages of the book were a grim reminder that there were unanswered questions. She stopped outside her parents' bedroom, her hand resting on the door handle. She hesitated, unsure of what she would find. The room had always been a sanctuary, but now it felt alien and unsettling. With a deep breath, she pushed the door open. The room was as she remembered it, the bed neatly made and the furniture arranged in its usual order. But there was something different, a sense of disquiet that lingered in the air. Laura stepped inside, her flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. The shadows seemed to shift and move with a life of their own. As she looked around, she noticed a small wooden box on the dresser, partially hidden behind a stack of old letters. It was intricately carved, with patterns that matched the designs in the trunk and the book. Laura's curiosity was piqued. She carefully picked up the box and opened it. Inside, she found a collection of old photographs and letters. The photographs were black and white, depicting people she didn't recognize, some smiling, others with somber expressions. She picked up one of the letters and unfolded it. The writing was old-fashioned and difficult to read, but the message was clear. It was a farewell note, written by someone who had left the house many years ago. Laura's hands shook as she read the letter. It spoke of a fear of the house, of a darkness that was growing stronger, and of a decision to leave before it was too late. The letter ended with a chilling line. May they find peace in the darkness. The words sent a shiver down Laura's spine. The letter was a clue, but it left her with more questions than answers. Who had written it, and who were they? The darkness she had encountered seemed to be tied to the house's history, but she needed more information. She continued to sift through the photographs and letters, trying to piece together the history of the house. One photograph in particular caught her eye. A group of people standing in front of the house, their faces solemn and serious. At the center of the group was a man with a stern expression and piercing eyes. Laura felt a strange sense of familiarity, as if she had seen him before. Her thoughts were interrupted by a sudden noise from downstairs. It sounded like footsteps, heavy and deliberate. Laura's heart skipped a beat. She knew she had been alone in the house, and the police hadn't arrived yet. Who could be here? She hurried out of the room, her flashlight beam cutting through the darkness as she made her way down the stairs. The footsteps were louder now, coming from the direction of the foyer. She reached the bottom of the stairs and stopped, listening intently. The foyer was empty, the front door still ajar. Laura's pulse raced as she scanned the room. The storm outside had picked up again, the wind howling and rattling the windows. She could see nothing out of place, but the feeling of being watched returned, more intense than before. Laura moved cautiously toward the foyer, her flashlight revealing nothing unusual. The noise had stopped, leaving only the sound of the storm. She took a few more steps forward, her eyes darting around the room. 
The darkness seemed to close in on her, and she felt a chill creep up her spine. Suddenly, a figure appeared in the doorway. It was tall and shadowy, with an indistinct form that seemed to blend with the darkness. Laura's breath caught in her throat as she tried to make out the figure's features. The storm outside illuminated the figure in flashes, revealing a glimpse of its pale, gaunt face. Laura backed away, her flashlight beam shaking. The figure remained still, its gaze fixed on her with an intense, unblinking stare. The whispers returned, a low, mournful sound that seemed to come from, from within the figure itself. Laura? The figure intoned, its voice a hollow echo of her own. You shouldn't have come back. Laura's fear was overwhelming, but she forced herself to stand her ground. Who are you? She demanded, her voice trembling. What do you want? The figure's gaze seemed to pierce through her, and it spoke again, its voice filled with sorrow. We were once like you. We came seeking answers, but we found only darkness. You cannot escape it. It will consume you as it consumed us. The figure's words were chilling, and Laura felt a surge of desperation. She needed to understand, to find a way to escape the darkness that had taken hold of the house. How can I stop it? She asked. What can I do? The figure's form seemed to waver, its edges blurring as if it were fading away. The key, the book, they hold the answer, it said, its voice growing fainter. But be warned, Laura, the darkness is never truly gone. It waits, it watches. With a final mournful look, the figure disappeared into the shadows, leaving Laura alone in the foyer. The whispers faded, leaving an oppressive silence in their wake. Laura felt a mix of relief and dread. The figure's words had given her clues, but they also deepened the mystery. She turned and made her way back to the study, her thoughts racing. The key, the book, the letters, everything seemed to be interconnected. She needed to examine everything more closely to uncover the truth about the house and its dark history. In the study, Laura spread out the photographs and letters on the desk. The photograph of the man with the piercing eyes was still fresh in her mind. She needed to find out who he was and what role he had played in the house's history. As she examined the letters, one in particular caught her attention. It was addressed to someone named Evelyn and was dated many years ago. The letter spoke of a secret ritual and a hidden chamber in the house. Laura's heart raced as she read the details. It described a place that sounded eerily similar to the hidden room she had discovered earlier. The letter mentioned a sacred space that was hidden from view, accessible only by those who knew the secret. Laura's eyes widened as she realized that the hidden chamber might be connected to the rituals described in the book. She glanced around the study, her thoughts racing. There had to be more clues hidden in the house, more secrets waiting to be uncovered. She needed to find the sacred space mentioned in the letter and uncover the truth about the house's dark history. With renewed determination, Laura set out to search the house once more. The key and the book had provided some answers, but there was still much more to discover. She knew that the darkness was far from defeated, and she had to uncover the truth before it was too late. Laura's determination to uncover the house's secrets intensified with every step she took. The letter she had found in the study hinted at a hidden chamber, a sacred space that might hold the answers she desperately needed. As she walked through the house, the silence was almost oppressive, the only sound the soft patter of rain against the windows. She returned to the second floor, the location of the hidden passage still fresh in her mind. The letter had mentioned that the sacred space was concealed from view, accessible only through a hidden mechanism. Laura started her search in the hallway, examining the walls and floors for any signs of a hidden door or passage. Her flashlight beam danced over the walls, revealing old wallpaper, scuffed woodwork, and faded paintings. She noticed that one of the paintings, a portrait of an elderly woman, seemed slightly askew. Laura carefully removed the painting from the wall, revealing a small, dusty safe behind it. The safe was old and rusty, its surface covered in cobwebs. Laura's heart raced as she realized it might be another part of the puzzle. She tried to open it, but the rusty lock was stuck. She needed the combination, but there were no visible clues about what it might be. Laura's mind raced as she thought back to the letters and photographs. There had to be a clue somewhere in the house that would help her unlock the safe. She decided to search the study again, hoping to find something that might provide the necessary information. 
In the study, Laura carefully examined the photographs and letters once more. The photograph of the man with the piercing eyes stood out. She had a nagging feeling that he was connected to the safe and the hidden chamber. She looked at the back of the photograph, searching for any writing or symbols that might provide a clue. To her surprise, she found a small handwritten note taped to the back of the photograph. It read, to find what is hidden, seek the light where shadows fall. Laura stared at the note, her mind racing. The phrase seemed cryptic, but it suggested that the light might reveal something hidden. She thought about the safe behind the painting and the shadows it cast. Perhaps the clue was related to the safe's location. She returned to the hallway and positioned herself in front of the painting. She noticed that the safe was positioned in such a way that the light from the nearby window fell directly on it. The shadows created by the painting and the safe formed an intricate pattern on the floor. Laura decided to experiment. She adjusted the position of the painting slightly and observed the shadows. The painting created a shadow that fell in a specific pattern on the floor. She tried moving the safe and the painting to see if the shadows aligned in a particular way. After several attempts, Laura noticed that when the painting was placed at a specific angle, the shadow on the floor revealed a series of symbols. The symbols were faint and barely visible, but they seemed to form a pattern. Laura took a deep breath and carefully traced the symbols with her flashlight. She noticed that they matched the symbols in the book she had found in the hidden chamber. The symbols seemed to correspond to a sequence, possibly a combination for the safe. With the symbols in mind, Laura returned to the safe and attempted to input the sequence. The lock clicked open with a satisfying sound, and the safe's door creaked as it swung open. Inside the safe, Laura found an old leather-bound journal and a small brass key. The journal was similar in appearance to the one she had already discovered, but it was in much better condition. She opened it cautiously, her flashlight illuminating the pages. The journal's pages were filled with neat, precise handwriting. It detailed the history of the house, the rituals performed within its walls, and the people who had lived there. The entries mentioned a series of events leading to the construction of the hidden chamber and the sacred space. One entry stood out. It described a ritual that involved the brass key and a specific location in the house. The ritual was intended to unlock the final secret of the house, a place of great power and darkness. The entry also mentioned that the ritual could only be completed during a storm when the forces of darkness were at their peak. Laura's heart raced as she read the entry. The storm outside was the perfect opportunity to complete the ritual and uncover the final secret. She needed to find the location mentioned in the journal and use the brass key to unlock it. With the journal and the key in hand, Laura set out to search the house once more. She followed the instructions in the journal, looking for clues that would lead her to the final hidden chamber. The house seemed to hold its breath, the silence broken only by the sound of the storm outside. She examined every room, every corner, and every shadow, searching for the location described in the journal. Her flashlight beam revealed nothing new until she returned to the study. She noticed that the journal mentioned a reflection as part of the ritual. Laura looked around the study and remembered the cracked mirror she had seen earlier. The mirror had been a focal point in the house's dark history. She moved the mirror to a different spot in the study, adjusting its position to see if it revealed any hidden mechanisms. As she moved the mirror, she noticed a small concealed compartment behind it. The compartment was hidden behind the frame and was covered in dust. Laura carefully opened it, revealing a small, ornate box with intricate carvings. The box was similar in design to the other items she had found, and it seemed to be connected to the house's dark history. Laura opened the box and found a series of old, handwritten notes and documents, as well as a final, ornate key. The notes described a final ritual that needed to be performed to seal away the darkness and protect the house from the malevolent forces. The key was meant to be used in conjunction with the ritual, unlocking the final chamber where the darkness was kept at bay. Laura felt a surge of hope and determination. She had found the final pieces of the puzzle, and she knew that she had to complete the ritual to protect herself and her family from the darkness that still lurked within the house. 
With the final key and the ritual notes in hand, Laura prepared to face the final challenge. The storm outside raged on, the wind howling, and the rain pouring in torrents. The house seemed to tremble with anticipation as Laura set out to complete the ritual and uncover the final secret. The storm raged outside, its fury seeming to resonate with the dark energy that had taken root in the house. Laura felt a mix of apprehension and resolve as she prepared to undertake the final ritual described in the journal. The storm was the perfect backdrop for completing the ritual, as the journal had indicated that the forces of darkness were at their peak during such times. Laura returned to the hidden chamber she had discovered earlier, the small brass key and the final notes clutched tightly in her hand. The chamber seemed to hold its breath, the oppressive silence broken only by the distant rumble of thunder. She set up a small table in the center of the chamber and laid out the notes and documents she had found. The notes described a series of incantations and procedures that needed to be followed precisely. The final key was to be used in conjunction with the incantations to unlock a hidden chamber where the darkness was believed to be contained. Laura's hands shook slightly as she read through the instructions. The ritual required her to place the final key in a specific location, recite the incantations, and perform a series of symbolic gestures. The instructions were clear, but the gravity of what she was about to do weighed heavily on her. She took a deep breath and began to follow the steps outlined in the notes. The first part of the ritual involved placing the final key in a hidden lock on the floor of the chamber. Laura searched for the location described in the notes, and after some effort, she found a small, inconspicuous panel in the center of the room. The panel was adorned with intricate symbols that matched those in the journal. Laura inserted the key into the lock and turned it. The panel clicked open, revealing a hidden compartment below. Inside the compartment was an old, dusty chest with a tarnished lock. Laura's heart raced as she opened the chest. Inside, she found a series of ancient artifacts, including a set of old candles, a ceremonial dagger, and a small vial of dark liquid. The artifacts seemed to be part of the final ritual, and Laura carefully arranged them on the table according to the instructions. The ritual required her to light the candles, draw a protective circle around the artifacts, and recite a series of incantations. Laura followed the instructions meticulously, her hands steady despite the storm's intensity. As she lit the candles, the flickering light cast eerie shadows on the walls of the chamber. The symbols and patterns created by the candle's glow seemed to come to life, dancing and shifting in the dim light. Laura drew the protective circle around the artifacts, feeling a sense of both unease and purpose. With everything set up, Laura began to recite the incantations. Her voice trembled slightly, but she focused on the words, trying to keep her mind clear. The incantations were in an ancient language, their meanings lost to time, but the rhythm and cadence were crucial to the ritual's success. As Laura spoke the final words of the incantation, she felt a sudden shift in the atmosphere. The air grew colder, and the storm outside seemed to intensify, the wind howling with an almost malevolent force. The shadows in the chamber grew darker, and the candles flickered wildly. Laura's heart pounded in her chest as she continued to recite the incantations. The dark liquid in the vial seemed to pulse with a life of its own, its surface swirling with a menacing energy. The ceremonial dagger, placed on the table, seemed to hum with a faint, ominous vibration. The chamber filled with a low, rumbling sound that grew louder and more intense. Laura felt a surge of power and fear as the darkness seemed to close in around her. The shadows on the walls twisted and writhed, forming distorted shapes and figures. Suddenly, a blinding flash of lightning illuminated the chamber, and a deafening crash of thunder shook the house. Laura was momentarily blinded by the light, that was, but she quickly refocused on the ritual. The final words of the incantation were upon her, and she spoke them with a desperate urgency. As she finished the last word, the chest and the artifacts on the table began to glow with a bright, golden light. The shadows in the chamber recoiled, and the oppressive darkness seemed to dissipate. The air grew warmer, and the storm outside began to subside. Laura felt a wave of relief wash over her as the light filled the chamber. The darkness had been pushed back, but she knew that the house's history and the forces that had haunted it were not entirely gone. The ritual had provided a temporary reprieve, 
but the true nature of the house remained a mystery. She carefully gathered the artifacts and placed them back in the chest. The final key, now glowing faintly, was returned to its hidden compartment. The chamber, once filled with darkness and malevolence, was now quiet and still. Laura took a deep breath and made her way back to the study. The storm outside had finally passed, leaving the house in an eerie calm. The whispers that had plagued her were gone, replaced by an unsettling silence. As she entered the study, Laura looked around at the remnants of her investigation. The photographs, letters, and journals were scattered across the desk, their secrets revealed. She had uncovered much about the house's dark history, but there was still more to understand. Laura knew that she had faced the darkness and survived, but she also knew that the house held many secrets yet to be discovered. The ritual had provided some answers, but the true nature of the house and the forces that had haunted it remained shrouded in mystery. With a final glance at the study, Laura resolved to continue her investigation. The house was quiet now, but she could not shake the feeling that it was still watching, waiting. She had uncovered some of its secrets, but there was more to discover. As she prepared to leave the study, Laura felt a sense of both accomplishment and apprehension. The storm had passed, but the shadows of the past lingered. She had faced the darkness and emerged victorious, but the true test was yet to come. The house had fallen into a strange, unsettling calm after the storm. The oppressive silence seemed almost as heavy as the darkness Laura had faced. As she prepared to leave the study, she felt a sense of relief mixed with unease. The ritual had driven back the shadows, but the house still seemed to hold its breath, as if waiting for something. Laura's thoughts turned to her parents and the safety of her home. The police had been delayed by the storm, and she hoped they would arrive soon. She had resolved to wait for them, but she needed a moment to collect her thoughts and process everything that had happened. She walked through the quiet house, her flashlight casting long shadows on the walls. The photographs and letters she had found seemed to take on a new significance now. They were more than just relics of the past. They were pieces of a puzzle that had led her to this moment. As Laura made her way back to the foyer, she noticed that the front door was still ajar. She walked over to close it, but a sudden gust of wind slammed it shut with a loud bang. Laura jumped, her heart racing. The house seemed to tremble with the force of the wind, and the temperature dropped noticeably. She took a deep breath and steadied herself. The front door had been the gateway to the house's darkness, and she wanted to make sure it was securely closed. As she locked the door, she noticed something strange, a reflection in the glass pane of the door. For a brief moment, she saw a figure standing behind her, its form distorted and shadowy. Laura spun around, but the foyer was empty. She could feel the hairs on the back of her neck, standing on end. The feeling of being watched was back, more intense than ever. Laura decided to investigate the source of the eerie feeling. She retraced her steps, heading back to the hidden chamber. The house was quiet, save for the occasional creak of settling wood and the distant sound of the storm receding. The ritual had pushed back the darkness, but it seemed to linger in the corners of the house. As she entered the hidden chamber, she noticed something odd. The chest she had closed earlier was now slightly open, its contents visible. Laura's pulse quickened as she approached the chest and carefully opened it. Inside, the artifacts and notes were still there, but the final key was missing. Laura's heart sank. The key was crucial to sealing the darkness, and its disappearance was unsettling. She scanned the chamber, her flashlight revealing nothing out of place. Her thoughts were interrupted by a soft whisper, barely audible but distinct. Laura? The whisper seemed to come from all around her, echoing off the walls of the chamber. Laura's breath quickened and she looked around frantically. The darkness seemed to close in, the shadows shifting and moving with an almost tangible presence. Laura, the whisper came again, this time more insistent. You cannot escape. Laura felt a cold chill run down her spine. The whispers grew louder, merging into a chorus of voices. The house was alive with the echoes of the past, and the darkness seemed to be closing in once more. She turned her attention to the journal and the remaining notes. Perhaps there was something she had missed, a final piece of the puzzle that could explain the current situation. She flipped through the pages of the journal, her flashlight casting a dim light on the text. 
a particular entry caught her eye. It described a final ritual intended to seal the darkness permanently using the final key. The entry warned that if the key was lost or taken, the darkness would not be fully contained and could return to haunt the house. Laura's heart pounded. The missing key was a serious issue, and the darkness seemed to be manifesting in the house once again. She needed to find the key and complete the ritual before it was too late. She decided to search the house thoroughly, starting with the rooms she had not yet investigated. As she moved through the house, she checked every nook and cranny, her flashlight revealing nothing unusual. The feeling of being watched persisted, and the whispers grew louder, more insistent. In the basement, Laura found a hidden door she had not noticed before. The door was old and weathered, with a rusty lock that seemed to be nearly falling apart. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized it might be connected to the missing key and the final ritual. She used the flashlight to illuminate the door and examine the lock. The symbols on the lock matched those in the journal and Laura carefully inserted the final key into the lock. The door creaked open, revealing a narrow, dark staircase leading further down. Laura descended the stairs, the air growing colder with each step. The basement was dimly lit by the light from her flashlight, and the shadows seemed to shift and dance on the walls. She reached the bottom of the stairs and found herself in a small, dimly lit room. The room was filled with old, dusty furniture and cobweb-covered shelves. In the center of the room was an old, ornate mirror, its surface cracked and tarnished. Laura approached the mirror, feeling a strange sense of deja vu. The whispers grew louder, merging into a single coherent voice. Laura? You should not have come. Laura's reflection in the mirror seemed to distort, her features becoming blurred and twisted. The mirror seemed to pulse with a dark energy, and the room felt as if it were closing in around her. With a deep breath, Laura approached the mirror and touched its surface. As she did, a wave of darkness surged from the mirror, engulfing the room. The shadows grew more intense, and the whispers turned into a deafening roar. The final ritual had to be completed, and Laura needed to act quickly. She used the final key to unlock a hidden compartment behind the mirror, revealing a small ancient book bound in black leather. The book was adorned with strange symbols and seemed to glow with a faint, otherworldly light. Laura opened the book and began to recite the incantations, her voice steady despite the chaos around her. The room seemed to tremble with the power of the words, and the darkness began to recede. As she finished the final incantation, the mirror shattered with a blinding flash of light. The darkness was driven back, and the room was filled with a warm, calming light. The whispers faded, leaving only a profound silence. Laura stood in the aftermath of the ritual, her heart racing. The house seemed to be at peace, the shadows and darkness finally gone. The mirror's shattered pieces lay scattered on the floor, and the final book was closed and resting on the table. She took a deep breath and looked around the room. The darkness had been contained, and the house was finally quiet. Laura knew that the echoes of the past would always be a part of the house, but for now, it was safe. With the final ritual complete, Laura made her way back to the foyer. The storm had passed, and the first light of dawn was breaking through the windows. The house was bathed in a soft, golden light, and the oppressive darkness had been lifted. As Laura waited for the police to arrive, she felt a sense of relief and accomplishment. She had faced the darkness and uncovered the secrets of the house. The past had been revealed, and the shadows had been driven back. The house was still old and worn, but it was no longer haunted by the malevolent forces that had once resided within. Laura knew that the echoes of the past would always linger, but for now, she could finally move on. The End